Contrary to the pure exam, most people thought that this one was okay. It wasn't too bad, Cambridge wasn't doing too much, it was just about fair. And I haven't seen the actual paper itself but some of you did give me feedback on the types of questions that were there so I'm going to go through those, give you my thoughts and then we'll talk about threshold at the end. I can imagine most students went into this paper prepared for the worst because of the horror that was pure one. If you haven't watched my thoughts on the pure one paper, make sure to watch that first and then come back to this video. But I think they got a bit of a gift in my opinion because the questions weren't really that bad and I'm hearing that it shared a few similarities with my guest paper. I don't know how far true that is, but if it is, fair play to those who actually did the guest paper. As they say, you can't win the lottery if you don't buy the ticket. Anyways, let's go through it question by question. According to my sources, it starts off with a four part question on probability. You've got a table with probabilities and I'm guessing you're being given certain scenarios and you have to evaluate their probabilities. And this is a total of five marks. That doesn't sound bad at all. Easy start to the paper, five free marks. But then you go on to question number two. Part A is an arrangement. Find the total number of different arrangements of the nine letters in the word algebraic. That's all well and good. Part B is a bit more difficult because now they've put a restriction. It's an interesting restriction, but it's definitely solvable. So we'll move on to part C. Part C, except there is no part C. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Because permutations and combinations always comes with an arrangement followed by a combination, but no. Not this time. There is no combination. Four marks for permutations and combination. Happy days. Well, not quite. We'll see why in a second. Next in line we had a six mark probability distribution table. Not a difficult question at all if you understand discrete random variables. In fact, I had this very question in my guest paper. So I imagine those who wrote the guest paper must have been very excited to see this question. Then number four is the normal distribution. Part A. We've seen this question before. It comes in pretty much every paper. It's the first thing you learn on the normal distribution. So I imagine it must have been straightforward for most students. On part B I expected a mu and sigma type question which we did get but it seems they brought the easier version of it which is the three mark one. They were very kind in this paper but I don't imagine that helps our threshold. And coming out of this fairly generous normal distribution question they hit you with combinations. See now this time they didn't just bring one permutations and combinations question. No they split them into two separate questions. This must have been a rude awakening because most students probably thought they had gotten away with it permutations and combinations only came with four marks and then they see the six mark question and in a paper with only 50 marks six marks can be the difference between an a and a b and combinations are not necessarily the most straightforward but they are doable and coming from that you move into a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram now i'll hold my hands up for this one i was very confident that this wouldn't come in the october series but lo and behold cambridge surprised this they seem to like to alternate the different representations between series so I expected that since we had this in June, we'd get maybe a cumulative frequency graph or a histogram in October since these haven't been seen in a long time now. But to be fair though, you've been doing stem and leaf diagrams since O levels so these should have been straightforward. Another shocker in the same question was coding. Coding is very rare. In fact, it had only appeared twice in the last two years before this. I was definitely shocked to see it and I think this is one of the sleeper concepts that most students struggle with so I imagine this took a few lives. Then number seven to end it all off binomial distribution and geometric distribution leading into a normal approximation to the binomial distribution. There's nothing unusual about this question. I had pretty much the same pattern in my guest paper for this question. Wow those who wrote the guest paper must have been loving life in that exam because the resemblance is uncanny. But it's no secret though that the normal approximation is one of the most frequent questions. Walking into that exam room without understanding it is like signing your own death sentence because it's going to be there. That's five marks automatically lost. So you're starting at 45 out of 50. And that's it. That's the paper. I mean, it wasn't that bad. In fact, it wasn't bad at all because I can't see any questions that I can point to and say that we've never seen this before. Everything was familiar and most of the questions were pretty straightforward. Like some were suggesting, it kind of feels like Cambridge were making up for the pretty chaotic pure one paper. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. 
threshold. I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone that the threshold will probably be fairly high. Most people found the paper easy, it wasn't a difficult paper and Cambridge is still trying to return to pre-covid standards so the paper being easy might not be so good after all. Looking at the previous thresholds you can clearly see the three distinct eras. The pre-covid era where our thresholds are pretty much always over 40. Then we have the massive drop off during the covid era to as low as 35 marks out of 50. Then finally we have our current era, the post covid era where you can see that the thresholds are returning to the pre-covid standard but occasionally that covid spirit gets to them and they drop off all right enough waffling my prediction for the 9709 probability and statistics one paper which was written sometime in october i can't remember the exact date a variant to i predict that the minimum mark required to get an a will be drum roll please 40 marks. It was a pretty straightforward paper, easy on the eye. Most students will probably do well, so I don't think our threshold is looking too good. Either way, I expect the threshold to be round about neutral, around 40, so it won't really help you. If anything, it might hurt you slightly. That's my prediction. Comment down below what you think the threshold will be. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my thoughts on the PO3 exam next week. And from what I'm hearing, that one was absolutely terrible. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye-bye.